Hi guys, welcome to the unboxing quick review of the FNI RSI DSO150 2 oscilloscope. By the way, it's important to know that this is the DSO150 2 Deluxe. So it comes in this basic box. So let's open, see what we get. Comes with some cables and a user guide. So let's remove that here. So I'm going to show you that here pretty quickly. I hope it's focusing nicely so you can read everything if you need. Of course, I'm not an electronic engineer. I don't have a PhD or so. I'm just a normal end user and want to see a little bit more information sometimes when there is some low voltage electronics and we have some oscillation means some variable voltage. And so here's the device itself. It looks like there's a seal on the side. Make sure that you get one with a seal which is not broken. And so let's remove that here. Okay, it looks pretty cool. So let's push it out. And so here we get the full instructions manual. I'm going to show you that also pretty quickly because I think it could be very helpful, especially regarding the buttons i hope it's focusing nicely so you can read everything then the next two pages on the left side how to use the buttons and on the right side the specs and i think that's already close to the end some information here how to use that i hope you can read everything yeah it looks like it's possible even to upgrade this device and so that's it already. And a USB charging cable, USB-C and a hand strap. And yeah, it's FNI or SI. I have already bought a couple of their devices and usually they are working really good. So I think it's a good company. By the way, I'm not affiliated with them. And uh, yeah, we can remove this screen protector, of course. And so let's charge it here from the side. Yeah, we see this red light here while it's charging. And when it's fully charged, we see this green LED. And what's good here is even while it's charging, we can still use it with full function. That's really convenient. And we have even a flap here in the back, which you can use as a stand. That's also something nice. So here we have the on off button. Maybe we have to low press. Let's see. Okay, it's turning on. Of course, I can't show you everything here. I just make a basic measurement here. And so I'm using this simple probe here with a plus and a minus. We just push it here inside. I think it's in the automatic mode. What's important to know regarding these buttons here, which you see on top, that's this button here. So you can push it inside. You can see there is short press, there is long press, and you can even move left and right. So when we long press, it should go into calibration. It says press run to calibrate it. So we are doing that now here. And so let's see if we can, for example, test such an oven tense device. It says it has maximum voltage of 50 volts. So of course, at the moment, we have the intensity on zero. So you can see there's pretty much nothing going on. We click on the plus and activate that. And now you can see the waveform, what it's putting out here. But there's not much. You can see very low voltage everything below one volt so i go higher here let's see what we get when we are using maximum strength definitely different wave pattern here what we also can see very important information the vpp that's the maximum oscillation between the highest peak and the lowest peak that's around 20 volts I mean, that was exactly what I wanted to test here. So we can clearly see that these TENS units are using AC voltage and not DC voltage here in the output. We can see also the frequency here, for example, 13 Hertz, 5 Hertz, 94 Hertz. You can see sometimes really high. I've seen it once above 100 Hertz. Then regarding the maximum 200 kilohertz measurement, I have here a test device, which I think is producing a very high frequency. So I start this here. I hold this here and connect here and connect the red to the other end and it's showing very high frequency i hope you can see that 
it's showing more than 200 kilohertz. Yeah, now we see a frequency of up to 290 kilohertz, which is definitely much higher than the 200, which I've seen on the packaging. Really interesting. Yeah, we even have a 308 kilohertz now. So I really don't know what's the maximum, what can be measured and what can be displayed here. And so let's also see if we can test 110 volts AC power. Of course, this is something which I do not recommend to do for everybody. This is just me doing this here for you. So you don't have to do this at home. Always be very careful when it comes to high voltage, high current. So this is what we have here. Of course, you have to be very careful with that. So we have it here. So I'm here a little bit closer so you can see the numbers. I cannot judge if these numbers are correct. These are just numbers which this device is showing to me. The question is then also, can we do just simple voltage measurement? For example, for a battery which is delivering low voltage DC. So I'm turning it on and connect it here plus to plus and i click on automatic and what we see here it's not showing anything useful i mean i'm using the automatic mode you'd think okay that should work it looks like it's trying to detect all kind of things what we can do by the way with this toggle here is to switch through this menu here when we click left, for example, you can see we can change these things. For example, the display regarding voltage. So here we are on 10 millivolts. We can increase to 20, 50, 100. But then, of course, the amplitude here is much lower. So with the automatic, usually it does a good job. Unfortunately, here with this measurement of the battery, it has a little bit of problems. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time. It almost looks like it's getting stuck now we are back and go to the right side you can see we can change this wave here that's x1 x10 there should be a change actually i don't know x1 x10 let's go to the right side you can see yeah now we can see the change from 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds 50 milliseconds 100 200 500 one second two seconds we can increase that yeah i think the maximum is 500 seconds and on the right side we can switch between dc and ac you can see if it's not detecting that automatically so of course we have dc here let's see let's try automatic again sometimes i had it that it was stuck for a while and i couldn't exit here with this button so then you have usually two options this opening is the LED, don't push here inside, but this here on the left side is the reset. So I guess we can use a toothpick here. Okay, yeah, this, this has definitely reset everything, So, but we have to turn it on again. What I have used sometimes to somehow reset it was to just plug it in to charge to USB-C power. And after that, I've been able to turn it off again. And so finally we have a result. I've just let it like that. I didn't change anything. I just left it like that. And you can see it now it's showing some result like 1.5 volt, which is pretty close to what we have here. Yeah, 1.5 volts doesn't look too bad. But when we test this here with this voltmeter, we can see that the voltage is actually much higher or at least a little bit higher. You have actually 1.922 volts and not the 1.5 which this device is saying. So this is definitely not a device which we can use to measure very small voltage very accurately. Yeah, I would say this is exactly what I wanted to see because it's not possible to measure that with any other device, at least not one which I have. And so I'm pretty happy with it. That's exactly what I want. So I can give you full recommendation. And so if you're interested, I'll put down the link to the Amazon listing down into the description so you can check it out and or it right from there if you like it. And I hope I've been able to help you a little bit with this video. If you have any questions or comments, just write to the comment section below. And I'm always happy to talk about these things. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.